so thanks a lot for the introduction and uh, thanks for having me as a speaker here. Uh, I'm the CEO of uh, Exiscope. Exiscope is a young company based on research from KTH in Stockholm. Uh, and we build what's called uh, the next generation X-ray microimaging. And I'm gonna tell you more about that. Uh, let's see. Uh, but first, a few uh, examples, a little teaser about what we do. Uh, we do imaging with uh, face contrast uh, technology uh, to get better contrast for low C samples. So basically anything organic. Uh, what we have been working the most on and where we have a lot of experience is in the biomedical applications. Uh, but we're also exploring a lot of other uh, fields. Uh, for example, we have tried polymer technology, archaeology, and the applications I'm going to show you today is, of course, food and packaging. Uh, the samples that we can study with our technology are from a few millimeters to a few centimeters. Uh, and the observable resolution that we get is one to 30 microns. Uh, and this is this is the take home message today that uh, if you need good contrast in centimeter sized samples with micron or tens of micron resolution, uh, I might have something for you. But first, before I go into the applications, uh, I would like to tell a few words about Exiscope. Uh, since we are a very young company, uh, I would guess a lot of people don't know about, about us yet. So everything started at uh, the KTH, Royal Institute of Technology in Stockholm, uh, where we did research on propagation-based face contrast imaging technology. Uh, we have been using and still use uh, excellent metal jet sources for our imaging. Uh, and as I said, we have been working a lot on biomedical imaging applications. Uh, and our work has been focused on making good algorithms for how to acquire images and how to process the images to get good image quality specific to the face contrast technology. In 2019, we founded Exiscope, uh, which today has five employees. Uh, we just got our in-house imaging system prototype ready, uh, and we are continuing the development on this one. Uh, and we will be ready to make our first uh, customer deliveries in 10 to 12 months. And I would also like to mention that we're opening up an imaging as a service. Uh, for those of you who don't want your own instrument, you can send samples to us and we image them for you uh, and you get the results back. So I guess some people here don't know about face contrast technology and uh, some people know a lot. Uh, so I'm going to go through a little bit about the basics. Uh, the propagation-based face contrast is quite similar to conventional imaging, uh, where you have an x-ray source, you have a sample, and you have a detector. Uh, the difference is that we keep the distances here marked as R1 and R2 a bit longer than in conventional imaging. And this gives uh, the radiation the ability to propagate. Uh, so tiny, tiny refractions in the sample uh, give rise to contrast, which can be detected. Uh, to do this, uh, we need to have a bright X-ray source uh, with small uh, focal spot and a high flux. Uh, this can, of course, be done at synchrotrons, uh, but we use uh, excellent metal jet sources uh, and put this into a compact X-ray system. Uh, for the detectors, there are several, several options. Uh, you can use a, either a medium resolution or a high resolution detector. Uh, in the system that we build, we make space for several detectors, uh, so you can shift between large field of view and high resolution quickly. 
uh, we do tomography. Uh, and for that, we of course need a rotation stage. Uh, and we also use uh, six linear stages to move things around uh, and make it an automated process. So why, why would you use uh, phase contrast? Uh, of course, the, the obvious benefit is that you get much better contrast, especially for uh, low C materials, uh, which is often the case in food and packaging. Uh, it's a dose efficient method. Uh, the scan process is very simple, uh, similar to conventional tomography, just uh, take images and rotate. And the scan times are fairly short. So I'm going to show you a couple of uh, application examples within uh, food and packaging. Uh, these examples are on a proof of principle level, uh, where we wanted to test our technology and the ability to use it in food and packaging. Uh, so it's been made on material that is widely available in the grocery store. So my first example uh, is tomography of uh, extruded foods. Here it's uh, a cheese cruncher. Um, and to the very left, you see a uh, single slice from the tomography, uh, where the total tomography was taken in three minutes. Uh, so this is for a compact x-ray system. Uh, it's fairly fast. Um, if you zoom in, uh, you can see that there is clearly sufficient contrast to differentiate between fat and carbohydrates. Uh, and of course, the salt uh, gives very strong contrast. So that appears uh, on the top of this image, uh, very bright over here. Uh, we also made a little comparison uh, to uh, confocal laser scanning microscopy uh, in the same or in, this, in a similar uh, sample of uh, the same type. Uh, the downside with the light microscopy is, of course, that you need much more sample preparation. Uh, for the X-ray tomography, we didn't need any preparation at all. So we don't use any staining or any other contrast agents. Looking instead at uh, two-dimensional projection images, uh, we examined the same sample, uh, but in much shorter exposure times. Uh, on the left here, it's a 150 millisecond exposure. Uh, what we can see in these images is that, again, the salt grains uh, appear very clearly, uh, and you can easily follow the uh, both size distribution and distribution of salt within the sample. Uh, you can also analyze the uh, pore structures. Uh, and for that, perhaps the three-dimensional images are even better. Uh, if we zoom in, in this little box, uh, we can see that even though we had very short exposure time, 150 milliseconds, uh, the observable resolution is between 10 and 15 microns in this image. Uh, this was a stationary sample. Uh, as a little experiment, uh, we also did uh, imaging while the sample was moving to, to simulate uh, inline inspection. Uh, and this, is our, this was our first try. Uh, we moved the sample at 40 millimeters per second. Uh, I know this is, this is not enough uh, to compete with uh, many production lines, which are much faster. Uh, but we did this as a test. Uh, to do this, we used a photon counting detector uh, to give uh, very fast readouts and uh, high image quality. Uh, so 
the detector is much smaller than the sample, uh, but has the, the full width of the sample. Uh, and then the sample was moving past the detector uh, while imaging. Uh, and even though it's moving at 40 millimeters per second, uh, we can see very small details. Uh, this salt grain is uh, between 20 and 25 microns, uh, but you can see even smaller ones, uh, which are between 15 and up to 20 microns, somewhere like that. Uh, this is just, just an example of that. In a compact system, we can still get pretty high resolution, even though exposure times are short. Uh, so what's even more interesting than a moving sample is, of course, a dynamic sample. Uh, and thinking about dynamic samples uh, within food, uh, a rising bread dough is, is the first thing that we could come up with. Uh, so we tried imaging uh, very fast tomographies of this uh, sample. Uh, so what you see here is a plastic tube uh, with the bread dough inside. Uh, we took uh, seven tomographies. Uh, each tomography was uh, 57 seconds. Uh, and then we could compile a little video of uh, how things were moving inside. So what you see here is the segmented air bubbles inside the dough. Uh, and you can follow them that in each time frame, uh, they grow a little bigger and rise a bit upwards. Uh, the smallest bubbles that we can see here are uh, 25 to 30 microns. Um, I also promised to show you some examples of packaging. Uh, this is a uh, milk package, uh, which we first imaged in uh, two-dimensional projections. Uh, this is the image of uh, the opening of this milk package. Uh, and zooming into this little box, we can clearly see that the paper fibers uh, are easily visible uh, with good contrast. Uh, we also did uh, tomography to get uh, three-dimensional images. Uh, and here, I'm sure there are other people here who know this sample much better than I do, uh, since we are have a background in the imaging technology. Uh, but what we can see here is that uh, small fibers down to three microns are, can be seen. Uh, we can also identify different layers of uh, polymers and uh, aluminum. Uh, we can find a little uh, breakage uh, over here. Uh, and there are probably more details that those who are experts in this uh, can see that I don't see. Uh, so to summarize what we do, uh, since we have a background in uh, the imaging technology uh, and a long experience, uh, we decided to build uh, X-ray systems. Uh, so it's an integrated system with all the equipment you need and software uh, to make face contrast imaging. And the benefit of this is, of course, much better contrast where it's not sufficient with conventional micro CT. Uh, since we use a very bright uh, X-ray source, uh, it's about a factor 10 brighter than conventional solid anode sources. Uh, this translates directly into faster imaging. Uh, so it's about a factor 10 faster. Uh, for some applications, we can bring them from the synchrotron to the lab, uh, but of course we cannot compete with all synchrotron applications. Uh, and as I mentioned in the beginning, 
we also start offering imaging as a service if you want to send your samples uh, for imaging. I would like to thank a few people. Uh, so this work was done in collaboration between uh, Exiscope, RICE, and uh, KTH. Uh, so it's my colleagues, uh, Jakob Larsson and Jenny Rommel uh, from Exiscope. Uh, from RICE, it's Emanuel Larsson and Camilla Ögen, and uh, Hans Hertz from KTH. And my very special thanks goes to Emanuel Larsson because he was the one who introduced us to all these uh, food science imaging applications, uh, and he has been very helpful in this. Uh, Emmanuel, he was at RICE at the time we did this, and he's now at uh, Lund University, and I know he's here at this conference, uh, so thanks to him. Uh, I would like to encourage you to visit our webpage or follow Exiscope on LinkedIn, uh, and if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask them now or send me an email. So thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, William. <clears throat> yeah, I had the same question as uh, Tommy. <laughs> what about the maintenance of the liquid jet source? People say it requires some effort. Uh, it requires more effort than a solid anode tube. It does. Uh, so you have to uh, change cathodes and nozzles every now and then. Uh, typically, it can run for several months without maintenance. Uh, so it's, it's pretty okay. And Simone is asking, could you comment on the available incident energy range? Uh, acceleration voltages are up to 160 kilovolts. Uh, emission lines of, uh, of the gallium, indium and tin, which is in this alloy are at around 10 keV and around 25 keV. Uh, so the, the efficient X-ray energies are around 10 up to 30 keV. OK. Could you, uh, in a forum like this, could you give a rough estimate of uh, the cost for one of your instruments? Is that allowed? Uh, it's, of course, I would like to discuss with the uh, Sure. Every one of you. Uh, it, it's not much more than um, the micro CT systems available on the market. Okay. Very similar in price. So if I start chopping off my fingers now, and for each million uh, Swedish kroner, uh, do I lose a whole hand? You lose a whole hand, but you don't lose both. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> Any more questions? There is a raised hand. Oh, sorry, I didn't see that. Please. If I, I think it's just faster if I interject right like this. So th thanks for the presentation. It was very interesting. I'm curious also about the range of uh, imaging techniques you rely on. So you mentioned phase contrast. Do you mean uh, single propagation or multi propagation, or do you do any tachography? This kind of things. Uh, we do single distance uh, propagation based imaging. Uh, we don't do tachography. Mm 